Welcome to the first doctoral student support webinar of 2023. I am so excited to welcome our guest presenter, Brendan Kumarasamy. He is the founder of Master Talk, and he coaches people to become the top communicators in their field. And I met Brendan when he was a guest on the Happy Doc Student Podcast, and the tips that he gave me are ones that have truly changed how I communicate, and I just thought, what a special guest to bring to this audience of doctoral students who are preparing themselves to be exceptional leaders in their field. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to you, Brendan. Absolutely, Heather. Well, first of all, thanks so much for inviting me. It's such a pleasure to be here, everyone. I'll just go ahead and share my screen here. We should be all set. So here's my first question for everyone. When you think of public speaking, what are some words that come to mind? Go ahead and type in the chat. So Joanna says beta blockers. That's interesting. Any other thoughts? Confidence, Samari. I love that, right? Being comfortable, Shatona. Absolutely. And by the way, if I have my my face on the right side, because I'm looking at my second screen on in the chat. Confidence, Anjana says fear. Shatona says being comfortable. Rhonda says fear, nerves, opportunity. Andre, I love that. Heather says nervous, anxiety and effective communication, Jennifer, I love that. Most of the time when I ask that question, these are some of the most common words that come out. Fear, anxiety, stress, no thanks, running away, bored, shivers. And the reason I bring that up is because a lot of you probably look at me today and think, wow, this guy must be a superhero of communication. And this is me pretending to be a superhero when I was three years old in Switzerland in front of my two uncles. But the truth is, is I'm not really a superhero. Most of my life, Growing up in Montreal, Canada, where I'm from, I struggle with communication and public speaking. And the reason is because I grew up in a French education system. So for those who don't know, living in Montreal means you got to know how to speak French, except I didn't know a single word of French. So not only did I struggle with communication, I had to present in a language I didn't even know. So you can imagine the fear, the anxiety that I had getting up on a stage in front of a bunch of first graders and going, uh, yeah, uh, bonjour. And that was my life growing up as a kid. The second challenge was I grew up with a broken left arm, a crooked left arm that's still crooked to this day, by the way. And the reason is because I had a surgery when I was younger. And because of that, whenever I would present, I would have a lot of anxiety because people would always stare at my arm. They do it a lot less these days, but back then they used to do it all the time. Kids just being kids, right? And it caused me a lot of social anxiety as well. And then you would think that when I got to college and university, which a lot of you are in the, in the process of finishing up or starting right now in your careers, you would think that finally I mastered communication. I became the speaker that I am today. Yeah, that didn't happen either. Uh, nobody told me that my tie is supposed to end at my belt. So I clearly didn't get the picture. This is me being a 19-year-old kid presenting to the CEO of this company at a competition I was at. And even after I started Master Talk, right, my YouTube channel, I still didn't know what I was doing. I was some kid in my mother's basement making videos on effective communication. Yet, despite all of those challenges in my life, I became the speaker that I am today. Today, Master Talk is over 30,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. A lot of my clientele are CEOs and executives at the Fortune 500, and they're incredible thought leaders in the space. But why am I telling you this story? I'm telling you this story before we even get into the tactics. Communication starts with dreaming. We dream about our careers, right? As nurses, as practitioners in the medical field. We, we dream about what we want to do in our academic career. We dream about our relationships, our health. When was the last time we dreamed about our communication skills? And the answer for all of us today or most of us is never. What are you talking about, Brendan? I never thought about dreaming about my communication skills. And the reason I bring that up is because I believe the next Oprah Winfrey, the next Elon Musk, is a seven-year-old girl who can't afford a communication coach. And that's why our mission at what we do is to help the world master the art of communication and create a society filled with powerful leaders and change makers. And that why, that raison d'etre, as we say in French, is what guides me to show up with the same level of energy that I'm showing up today. There's probably a third speaking engagement just today. 
right? And that's really the key. When you have a deeper reason, right? This is one of my friends, Raf, who's teaching his kids how to speak through our YouTube channel. It really drives me. So I'd love for all of you in the chat today, take 30 seconds and ask yourself this. If we were all exceptional communicators, how would this benefit us in our teammates at work and in our lives? So go ahead and take 30 seconds now and share in the chat, hmm, how would my life be better? And for all of you watching the recording as well after this, I want you to reflect on these exercises as well. How would your life be different? Would it impact your career, your grades at school, the people around you? What are some thoughts? Fewer misunderstanding, so probably less stress. I love that, Heather. And I don't want you to overthink this question either. Just think about it. Samari, less confusion. Candace's success, influencing others. Absolutely, Anjana. Right, Jennifer, more efficient, right? These are the outcomes that we don't think about because the first thought we have around communication is always centered around the fear. Whereas for me, it's always been about saying less confusion, more efficiency, more impact, less questions. It's easier to help other people. There's more success. Clarity equals power. And Teresa also said something great, more comfortable. Lavinda says, I would be more successful. Absolutely. Melinda as well. It would be incredible for my position at work and even more important for intimate relationships with family and friends. I'm always proud to say that I've lived with my mother and my sister my whole life, and we have never argued in the last five to seven years. I don't remember the last time we had an argument. And that's really the magic of communication. All right, so in today's presentation, we got around 20 minutes here before we get to Q&A. I want to teach you three practical ways of how to work on your communication skills on a daily basis so that you can become that communicator that you want to be. Let's start with impromptu speaking. So this begins with the random word exercise. So the random word exercise is really simple. All you have to do is pick a word like light bulb, like phone, like ceiling, like chair, and create random presentations out of thin air. And this exercise serves two main purposes. The first purpose is that it helps you deal with uncertainty. Life is filled with it. When you're talking to somebody new at a party, when you're going for a job interview, when you meet somebody new, you don't come to that conversation and say, actually, this is the dialogue that we're going to be approaching this conversation today. No, you have no idea how that conversation is going to go. So knowing how to deal with uncertainty is how we get those results. The second piece that I teach a lot of my CEO clients is if you can make sense out of nonsense, you can make sense out of anything. And that's the magic of the random word. Do this with your friends. Do this with the people on this call. Do this with your kids. Do this in the shower. And if you do this consistently, you'll get consistent results. So since I'm the leader today, here's what we're going to do. The first person in the chat to type a random word, it could be any, I will do the exercise. So whoever types a word in the chat, ball. Awesome, Samari. So that way you know I'm not cheating. So now I'll do the random word exercise for 60 to 90 seconds so you see what it looks like. Sounds something like this. It's Sunday morning, and like some Sunday mornings, I like spending the time at the park. So I go to the park, and I see different things happening. I see kids playing in the playground. I see a dog running around. And I also see a soccer ball. I see a football. I see people playing sports. And you know what I find so interesting about the ball is that one ball can be interpreted in a hundred different ways. You got basketballs, you got baseballs, and you got all these types of things. And it reminds me so much as a kid of how one simple basketball, one simple idea can cause so much happiness and lead to so much power in our day to day. Just a few weeks ago, I had a holiday season. I took a few weeks off for once in my life and I spent it with my cousin. And for three hours, all we did was shoot hoops. We took a basketball and we threw it in a hoop. And the reason I bring that up, especially in the topic of balls, because it's so important, is the following. There are so many things in our life that are really, really tiny, that most would consider negligible, that bring so much happiness in our life. And for you, it's maybe shooting a basketball in a net. But for other people, it might be watching their favorite TV show. For others, it could just be taking a walk or reading a book. So I ask all of you today, reflect on what is that simple way that can bring you more happiness in your life? Because if you find it, 
you won't need all of those external things. You won't need the Rolex watches, the big homes, the private jets. All you'll need is those simple ideas. And it could be a basketball to bring you that happiness. That's the random word exercise. Pick a word and create random presentations out of thin air. But a couple of thoughts that I want to bring about here. The first one is, do not compare yourself to me. I've done the exercise 3,000 times. Not three times, not 30 times, not 300 times, 3,000 times. So it's okay if the random word exercise isn't perfect. You know, my philosophy is always the first 100 times you do it, not the first 10, the first 100, you don't keep score on how well you do it. You keep score on how many times you do it. That's really the key. And I would encourage you to do it a lot because guess what? If you do it for five minutes a day for the next month, that's five times a day. If you do it for a month, you'll have done it 150 times. So it's actually not that hard to do it 100 times. That's why I encourage all of you to book those 10 to 15 minutes in your schedule every day for the next 30 days. That's all I ask. And there's three main benefits to the random word exercise. The first one is it removes a lot of anxiety and presentation. Because if you could talk about avocados, like honestly, I struggled with ball. Because I was like, how am I supposed to do ball? I haven't gotten that one in a while. But because I can do that, if I go back to my topic around communication, which I spend every single day of my life working on, those presentations are a lot easier, right? Like this presentation, I've probably done a hundred times. And that's the key. The second piece is it's super easy to practice. You don't have to overcomplicate this. You do this with people around you, but it's really just doing it a few times a day. You know, we always say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, a random word exercise definitely keeps Brandon away. So that's the key, right? So if you want to keep the, the speech grinch away, just do the random the word exercise a few times, then you'll get the result. And the third piece is that impromptu speaking at work will really worry you, whether it's in nursing and medicine and academia, what, what the path is for you. You'll have a lot less anxiety there because you'll know what you're talking about over time. You'll have industry expertise as you mature in your careers. And that's exercise one. So let's go ahead to move to exercise number two. Before we go to exercise number two, I want all of you to take 30 seconds right now in the chat and type, what is your biggest lesson so far in this workshop? Was it the random word exercise? Was it my personal story? Was it around me being in my mother's basement when I started Master Talk? What are some of the takeaways that you've gotten so far from this workshop? Because that's how we retain the information, right? So go ahead and take 30 seconds now and type in the chat, what is the biggest lesson that you got so far. Anjana says random word exercise. Joanna, by the way, if I mispronounce anyone's name, I apologize in advance. I just always found that it's, you're better off trying to pronounce the name than not recognizing people on the call at all. So, so it's a trade-off. Joanna says great exercise and so relevant. Lavinda says random word exercise, random word exercise. Just do it, Jennifer. Absolutely, right? So the key here is not to do it well. It's about having the bias for action, right? Self-confidence in what you do, comfortable with speaking Shatona. Absolutely. Winsome says random word exercise. Teresa, absolutely. It's been, it, it would have been a great resolution. Hey, it's never too late, Teresa. You don't have to wait until next year. You can always end Shantina. Absolutely. Random word exercise. Now let's jump into the leadership skills. Here's the piece that I feel isn't taught enough in colleges and universities. They'll apply now. Your personal brand is everything. Every interaction you have with anyone is an investment in your personal brand. So what do we mean by this? Steve Jobs had a great quote on this that I love. He says, every time you interact with someone, you're either making a deposit or a withdrawal in your personal brand. So if you interact in the right way, people go, wow, this person's going to be amazing. But if you also do it in the wrong way, it leads to some repercussions as well. So always think about your personal brand and how it relates. And I'll use a few stories and analogies to demonstrate this. Let's start with the first one, which is a soccer slash football game. So I want all of you to pay attention to the two soccer players on the screen here. So the person on the left in the white shirt, let's say is doing $10 million a year. And the person on the right, the person in the maroon shirt, just started his football career, just started his soccer career. And he's doing, let's say, 250K a year. But the person in the white shirt isn't playing a great game. Whereas the person in the maroon shirt is playing one of the best games of his life. He's trying to get every pass. He's putting in that extra time. 
And even if he might not win the game, everybody in that stadium is paying attention to the guy in the maroon shirt, not the guy in the white shirt. They're looking at the kid in the maroon shirt and they're saying that person is going to be somebody someday. And that is the value of showing up. And this is a quote for all of you that you can write down that I got from one of my mentors, Lewis Howes, and I'll repeat it twice. The quote is, the world will always make room for passionate people. The world will always make room for passionate people. So if you show up with that passion, you'll definitely get the result. Let me give another example on this. So here's a fun game I like to play, leader A versus leader B. So here's what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to pretend to be your leader. Okay, let's say it's like a manager type meeting. And I'm going to say the same information in both instances. And everybody on the call is going to vote in the chat which leader you prefer working for. Okay. So I'll play two leaders, leader A, leader B. And then all of you in the chat are going to vote which leader you would rather work for. Sounds good? Thumbs up if that makes sense, everybody? Good? Awesome. So leader A sounds something like this. Uh, yeah, so uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Brendan. And <coughs> today, uh, in today's meeting, we're going to cover uh, two things three key man ideas and if you have any questions you could text me at my phone or uh i guess you could email me so that's leader a notice how heather's smile just like evaporated when i when i did leader a. <laughs> all right let's do leader b now leader b sounds something more like this hi everyone i hope you're having a great day i see heather's here melinda and did i see barbara and joanna are here as well so great to have you in the meeting so in today's meeting we'll be covering these three key ideas and if you have any questions you're welcome to just send me a text or send me a quick email It'll be my pleasure to serve you so who wins team in the chat so tell me why Tell me why, everyone. Because I said the same thing. It's the same information. So why are we picking B? Go ahead and tell me why in the chat, team. Why is B so much better than leader A? B has passion. B is engaging. The confidence of it. B seemed present. The presentation of the information. Absolutely, team. Love that. Love that, everyone. Goal setting. Right, Teresa? Heather, more confident. Anjana, leader. Energy of the leader. You seem interested and positive. Love that, Melinda. So here's a fun question that I have for all of you now. How would you feel if I showed up like Leader A today? You be honest with me in the chat. Let's say I showed up today like Leader A, and I was like, hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, so I coach people. Uh, I'm going to teach you all a bunch of communication tips. I'd be bored, may leave. See, Candace is being nice. You know, I might leave. Maybe this is school is saying. Maybe I have to stay on the call, Brendan. I don't know. I would exit Zoom. I could be bored, right? Play on the phone. Exactly, team. So how you show up really matters. Okay? How you show up matters. So here's a quick trick on how to get better at this, how to show up more effectively. Part of that is in the way that we answer questions. Okay? In the way that we answer questions. Love that, Teresa. So when we think about question drills, this exercise really changed my life in a powerful way and really helped solidify my positioning as a communication expert relatively early in my career, I would also argue. So here's the way this exercise works. It's very simple. Every single day, every single day for five minutes, answer one question that you think the world would ask you about your expertise, your products, or your services. Let me give you a close example that, that assists in many of your college, university students, an easy example. Think about your school assignments. Think about a presentation you have to give in class. Very few students try and guess the questions that their teachers will ask them. This is what I used to do when I was in college not too long ago, probably five years ago, when I was finishing my bachelor's degree. A lot of times I would get a lot of presentations in accounting, which is funny. That's what I graduated in, literally the opposite of what I do today. And in those college university sessions, me and my friends, when we would do group presentations, we would guess all of the questions we thought faculty was going to ask us. So day one, we'd like, oh, they're probably going to ask us more about this policy in accounting or this in nursing. So then when the professor came up and started asking us questions, we had appendix slides on every single question. So let's say a teacher would say, well, Brenda, did you consider this? And we go, thanks so much for bringing that up. Josh, can you bring up slide 67, please? And then boom, 
the slide would appear and I would just start answering the question. And the teacher would just look at us and go, what in the world is happening? So I would get an A or an A plus for every single presentation I gave in school. But it doesn't just apply for school, right, team? It applies for your life. So when I started coaching executives who are 20 years older than me, I had a lot of imposter syndrome. So how did I fix it? I just knew more than they did. Every day, I answered one question about communication. But if you do that for a year, you'll have answered 365 questions about your industry. You'll be bulletproof. And I've been doing that for three years. So when you answer a thousand questions in the industry, it becomes the only five minutes of work every day. So every day, book those five minutes in your calendar to answer just one question and watch it add up over time. You'll know the answer to almost everything. You look way more impressive in front of leaders, executives, senior leaders at the different careers that you'll be taking on in your life. And it'll be a lot easier for you to present without being nervous. All right, team, last exercise for today. Can anyone tell me in the chat what this is? What is this in the chat? Does anyone know? It's not, it's not a trick question. It's pretty obvious what's on the slide. But tell me what's in the like Puzzles, right? A lot of us as kids, we play puzzles. And a lot of us still do. Right? So here's a question for the team when we work on puzzles. Which pieces do we start with first? When you work on a puzzle, when you do puzzles, which pieces do you start with first and why? So a lot of you have different answers, but most of you seem to be answering the edges. So tell me why. Why is the answer the edges? Why do we start with the edges? Easier. Absolutely, Heather, right? They're easier to find. They're a defined area. Great, Teresa. Right? They're easier to find in the box. They're easier to put together. So why am I bringing this up in a communication presentation? Right, Barbara, the edges provide the framework. So how does that apply to communication? Helps us envision the puzzle. Have you, have you all been through this workshop before? My goodness. So, so you're right, exactly. But in communication, unfortunately, we do the opposite. We start with the middle first. We shove a bunch of content in our presentations. We get to the presentation. We ramble throughout the whole thing. And then the last slide sounds something like this. Uh, yeah, so thanks. Not the right approach. So instead, what you want to do is practice like a jigsaw puzzle. Practice just your introduction, team. Just the intro. 20 times, 25 times. Absolutely, Teresa. 20, 25 times. It doesn't take that long. Your introduction is like a minute or two. So it'll take you upwards of an hour to do it 25 times. Not that long. Same thing with the conclusion. What's a great movie with a terrible ending? Last time I checked, terrible movie, right? So same thing with the close. And then practice the middle. If you do it that way, every presentation you'll give, especially with a lot of the college students here, you're going to be having seven presentations, five presentations, three presentations that you have to give in a semester. Well, if you practice this efficiently, you'll be way more proficient in your presentations. So start with the edges first, practice your intro, your ending 10, 15, 20, 25 times. I want all of you to recap. What were the three exercises that we learned today, team, in the chat? What's the first one? What's the second one? What's the third one? Because that's what will really help us retain this information. Great advice for your oral defense. Absolutely. For dissertation defenses, they're awesome as well. Absolutely. Right? Random words, Joanna. Love that. That's one. What are the other two? In the chat. Because if we forget the exercises, it's really hard to do them after this workshop is over, right? So the first one's the random word exercise. The second one is, we're do, we just did it, right? Drilling with answering questions, right? And puzzle, Jennifer, absolutely. So the random word exercise, pick a word, present it every day. That's it. Question drills. Pick a question, answer a question every day. Exactly, Candice, perfect. Practice words, do the question drills, puzzle. And the third exercise is present and practice your presentations like a jigsaw puzzle. Does anyone know who this guy is in the chat? Some of you might not know him. Uh, Simon Sinek, yeah, absolutely. So for those who don't know, Simon Sinek is the author of the book, Start With Why. So he, he got really famous because of his TED talk. 
and he's really revolutionized the idea of personal development and how to find something deeper in why we do the things that we do instead of what or how. And this book is something in addition that he wrote to other books like Eaters Eat Last, Find Your Why, The Infinite Game, and Together is Better. But what's interesting about Simon's story is that all four of the books on the screen team were all New York Times best-selling books. So the New York Times list just means that you're in the best-selling books of all time. You've done really well. You sold a bunch of copies, thousands of copies, millions of copies. But what's interesting is that his best book, Start With Why, was not a New York Times bestseller. Why is that? Why have all of these books become New York Times bestsellers, whereas this book was not a New York Times bestseller? And the answer is simple to you. The answer is nobody knew who Simon Sinek was. So when he first gave his TED Talk, nobody knew who the guy was. So because nobody knew them, he wasn't a New York Times bestseller. But then after he gave that TED Talk, he was able to solidify a personal brand. And now presidents of companies, presidents of countries are on a waiting list waiting for this guy to come speak at their country, their embassy, their conference. When he did that TED Talk, for those of you who haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. A lot of things weren't going right. He made a lot of mistakes. He had to change his mic. This is when TED was just getting started. And it wasn't really perfect, as you can see. Yet it completely changed the course of his career. So the advice here, team, as we close this off and open to Q&A, is visibility is profitability. You don't need to become a TED speaker, but the message here for all of you is communication makes the difference in any person's career and really allows you to solidify who you are and how you want to be, especially with a lot of doctorate students. Some of you might just want to stop with the academic research, but many of you on this call want to share the ideas from your research, from everything that you've done to the world. Brene Brown's a great example of this, right? She was a PhD. She is a PhD in social work. And then she took the information that she built, spent years researching, and brought it to the world. And that's really the magic that I want to leave all of you with today, is I believe all of you have that potential. And you don't need to be the best author in the world, but what you need to be is to be the best curators of your ideas because there's only going to be one version of you and if you share that uniqueness with the world you might change a couple of lives along the way thanks so much everyone such a pleasure to be here and these are just a couple of ways to stay in touch the youtube channel the linkedin if you have any questions you're welcome to to message me thanks so much everyone great to be here during the question and answer period, many attendees express their gratitude for some simple exercises that will help them hone their communication skills, not just in the workplace, but especially for their oral defense and the dissemination of their doctoral study or project after they complete their degree. There was also an interactive discussion among some students who were on the call who expressed how practicing these exercises would help them given that English was not their native language and they were looking for some practical things that they could do to help them with their verbal skills. Please be sure to join us for February's webinar. It's always the third Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So in 2023, that will be February 15th. Dr. Elizabeth Roshan will present a webinar on how to master the basics of PowerPoint. You definitely do not want to miss that one. Looking forward to seeing you then.